Um, this really is a type of problem where I think it's easier when you have actual values to work with. So we're going to try to solve this equation. 2xy dx plus the quantity x squared minus 1 dy is equal to 0, given the initial condition y of 2 equals 3. It's already written as an um, exact equation form, um, and in this case, we would have that m is 2xy and n is x squared minus 1. And then we need to verify that it is exact. Um, you know, I, I told you we were going to start with only examples where it is, but just it's good practice to make sure that we know it is. So we're going to take the partial derivative with respect to y of m, the thing that was, oh no, the thing that was multiplied by dx. Um, and that's going to be 2x. If you're a little rusty on your partial derivatives, you just treat everything except for y like a constant, take the derivative. And then we're going to take the partial derivative of n with respect to x. n was the thing that multiplied by dy. Um, so that's d dx of x squared minus 1. And that's going to be 2x. And so again, we have that those two partial derivatives are equal, so we know that this is an exact equation. Um, if you're having trouble remembering, sort of note that we're always like crossing things over. The thing that multiplied dy, we take the partial with x. The thing that multiplied dx, we take the partial with y. Um, it's easy to kind of mix those up. So we have an exact equation. We can go ahead and proceed with the rest of the steps. So we're trying to find f, which we think is the integral of m with respect to x. So for us, that's the integral of 2xy with respect to x. And we're treating y like a constant, only integrating x. So we've got an x squared, 2x becomes x squared, times y. And then this is when that g of y shows up because since I integrated with respect to x, but this function clearly has y's in it, then there might be something that depends on y in f that didn't show up here. Um, this might be familiar if, if you remember um, from Calc 3 taking integrals with respect to um, like variables or partial derivatives with respect to variables. If it's not, that's okay. Just kind of like hang in here and hopefully it'll become a little bit like fresher. So we know that f is x squared y plus g of y. You're just going to have to trust me on the g thing if you don't already know that. And then if we write it that way, we know that g is equal to f minus x squared y. So that means if I took the derivative with respect to y, I would have df dy minus the derivative of x squared y with respect to y is just x squared. Because um, I treat x squared like a constant, derivative of y is 1. Um, and then we need to know what df dy is, but I told you that um, m is carrying for us information about derivatives with respect to x, that's why it multiplies by the dx, and n is carrying information about derivatives with respect to y, that's why it multiplies the dy. Or, alternatively, you could think, I already used m, so I bet it's time to use n. Either way, we go ahead and plug in n for that df dy, and this becomes x squared minus 1 minus x squared or g prime of y is minus 1. This whole aside started because I had this g and I didn't know what it was. So now that I know what g prime is, I'm going to integrate it to try to get g again. So it's the integral of uh, minus 1 dy, which is just minus y. Um, 
Now, I said f was x squared y plus g, so I know that it's actually x squared y minus y. I just want you to know a lot of the time that's the thing that your answer in the web work. Um, they'll already have the setting it equal to a constant and that's the thing that you put in the box. Um, for us to write the solution, we just need to take it one step further. And set f equal to a constant so we can find a general solution. Um, and then we go ahead and try to solve for y. So we're going to have y times x squared minus 1 on the left here. So that just means that y is c over x squared minus 1. Um, and that's going to be the general solution for this specific problem. Um, I'm going to go ahead and finish this out, even though it'll make it a little bit long. Um, reason being that this is the participation problem and I don't want it split across two videos. So just hang in there. We've got one extra step of solving for that unknown constant. So if y is equal to um, c over x squared minus 1 and y of 2 is equal to 3, then we know that 3 should be equal to c over x squared minus 1, where x is 2. So my x value is 2, my y value is 3. I went ahead and plugged it all in. Or 2 squared is 4, so 3 is equal to c over 3. This means that c is equal to 9. So y is equal to 9 over x squared minus 1. And that's going to be the solution to the initial value problem. Um, I don't actually know if you need to solve an initial condition in your web work, but just in case, that's how you would do it. That c that we set f equal to is treated like the c that comes out of constants of integration. And um, you might have noticed as I was going through all this that aside from reminding myself that I needed g, I didn't bother with constants of integration when I came back over here and was integrating g. Um, if you did add a constant at that step, it would be okay. It would just get absorbed in that constant we set it equal to. So you don't um, necessarily need it. And if you do introduce it, just make sure that you have only one constant at the end. Um, I know this was a really long um, problem with a lot of steps. Real quick, I just want to highlight the number that belonged to each step we did in the problem. So that hopefully this kind of connects better with that super abstract description we had at the start. So um, we had an exact equation to begin with, so we didn't have to manipulate it. And then we verified that it was exact by taking those partial derivatives. Um, we went ahead and integrated m to try and find f, which took us to step three. But then we had that unknown g that we had to deal with. Um, that took us here, where we sort of rearranged everything to write g in terms of other quantities, and eventually plugged in our n to get g some kind of um, sorry, g prime some kind of function that we can integrate later. That's our um, step four. And then once we isolate g prime, something that can be integrated, here was our step five where we go ahead and evaluate that integral. Um, and then after that, we're just plugging everything in to get a single function. So we did that here combined the two functions and set them equal to the same constant here. Um, and then it was possible for us in this last step to isolate y 
might not always happen, but it is nice when it does. Um, so all of that is how we solved one of these exact equations. Um, I forgot to move the marker down to that I was doing an example. I'm so sorry about that. Um, and then I'm going to cut this off and start the next video.